everybody. Um, I'm here today, Elise, with my sister Ava. Welcome back to the Angel Baby Show. And today we have a very special guest, Siobhan Fallon Hogan. You may know her from movies like Men in Black and Forrest Gump, as well as shows like SNL and Seinfeld. I'm so excited to have you today. Welcome in. Thank you so much, Elise. And hi, Ava. I didn't get to meet you two years ago, but I'm really happy to be on your show. Hi. Thank you for coming in. I love that you're a family affair. You know, my movie Shelter and Solitude is a big family affair. It's my husband yes. is the producer, my son is the producer, and he's also in it, and the music supervisor. And my daughter, Sinead, is 21, and she's a production designer, and she's an actress in it as well. So I, I love working with family, and obviously you two do as well. Would you like to share a little bit more about, like, what inspired you to write this film specifically, and how it's a little different from Rushed, or how it's similar to Rushed? Absolutely. My dad and I were really, really close. He was really funny, you know, but tough. He kind of like like a big, tall Tip O'Neill. People always said Bill Fallon should take it on the road. He was so funny. He was an attorney. And so he represented a lot of prisoners. And so he would tell us about them at the dinner table. And I was kind of like fascinated. I was also afraid. Sometimes I'd go to bed at night and be like, uh-oh, I hope they don't come in the house. And so, but he also wanted me to be a country singer. So when I, when I finished Rushed, Around May 1st, I was in bed, of course not sleeping, thinking, hope the movie does well, brushed. And this idea came to me. I thought, what if a guy's on death row and a washed up country singer becomes his prison guard? And then I said, wait a minute, I have to get Robert Patrick in it. You know, Robert Patrick from The Terminator, Walk the Line, who played my husband in Rushed. So I was like, he could be the warden. So literally the next morning I got up and I looked at the piece of paper that I scribbled down, like when people do when they have a dream or something. And I said, I'm gonna write this. And it, and it came out in three weeks. I think it was a miracle. Were there any specific roles or people that you kind of, I feel like a lot of actors, when they're taking on a role, they think of someone in mind that they're trying to embody. Was there anyone you were kind of impersonating at all or? Well, it is hilarious at my stage of the game because some of my close friends think that they've still got it. <laughs> and believe me, they don't. <laughs> and they will try to like rock a dress that is like no business. My mother used to be like, kids, kids, kids. Now look at that woman. Imagine her thinking she could pull that dress off. <laughs> but, like in the in the movie, I'm like showing a little too much cleavage, a little kind of gross, fleshy. Like I got the long eyelashes on and, you know, doing the hair up and and we're in the high heels. Like, she thinks she's got it going on, and she does not. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you. Great talking to you. You're lucky to get to work together. And nice seeing you again. Yes. All right, toodaloo. Nice to meet you. Bye-bye, uh, angel babies. Bye. <laughs>